Hey guys, what's up? I'm Ella. I've been a Mac user for a pretty long time now, and I've accumulated some pretty cool apps and tricks that I think really help to improve my productivity when I'm working on this thing. So today I'll be sharing with you guys some of my favorite ones that I think are a bit underrated. In this video, I will not be mentioning the ones that are frequently talked about, such as hot corners or creating stacks to organize your desktop. And by the way, if you don't know what those are, then you should definitely check out my previous video, which which is more of a starting from scratch MacBook customization and setup guide. But before we get started, I want to tell you guys about the sponsor of this portion of today's video, which is CapCut. If you're looking for an easy way to edit your videos, then I'd recommend checking out CapCut. It's a free all-in-one video editing app with no watermarks, no ads, and no features hidden behind a paywall. It's available on iOS and Android, and you can use it to edit videos for Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Etc. And it has a huge library of filters, effects, and sounds. All right, so CapCut is very easy to use. You don't even need an account. It's amazing for beginners who just want to get started at making TikToks or other videos. So in CapCut, you can choose the format, like the resolution and frame rate. You can also add text, and I really like these bubble texts. There are also a ton of features for you to choose from, as well as many cool video effects. I really like this retro film effect and body effects, which only applies to the person in the video. And as for audio, so CapCut does have an in-app sound library, but it can also extract music from your downloaded videos, and there's even a text-to-speech and auto-caption function, which can definitely save you a ton of time. Now, CapCut is also capable of some really fancy things. So in style, there are lots of impressive effects that can change an image into a video, and I really like this 3D zoom one. And lastly, you can remove background smoothly, without even having a green screen. You can check out and download CapCut at the link down below and get started at making your own video today. Thank you CapCut for sponsoring and now let's get back to the video. Okay, so if you've ever copied something just to realize that you actually still need the thing that you copied before or if you just wanna copy multiple things at once, then you should definitely try using a clipboard manager. And there are many clipboard manager apps out there, but I found that most of them are either paid or they don't support poor images. But I did find this one app called Mackey, which is open source and free, and most importantly, it supports images and even files. So this app can store up to 1,000 things that you've copied, and you can search through everything, and of course, clear it all too. So to bring up your clipboard history, just hit Command, Shift, and C, and then click whatever it is that you want to paste, and this would put that item into your current clipboard. But I like to also enable the paste automatically setting, which directly pastes the item that you just clicked. So you can use Mackie to copy a bunch of things and then paste all of them all at once without having to go back and forth between apps in order to copy and paste things one by one. Mackie can be found in the app store, but it does cost $14 there. However, since this is an open source project, you can download it for free and I'll have a link to where you can find it down below in my description. And speaking of having images in your clipboard, I used to take all of my screenshots with just command and shift three or four. However, I found that that's actually not the best way to do it about 90% of the time. And this is because after taking a screenshot with command shift three or four, it lingers as a temporary file for a few seconds. And then in these seconds, you can drag it into a document or into a text message. And if you don't do anything, then the screenshot will just save onto your Mac. So if you have no intention of saving the screenshot as a file and you just want to add it to your document or send it to someone, then screenshotting to your clipboard makes much more sense. And macOS does have a built-in way to do this, and let me quickly show you guys. To do this, just hit Command, Control, Shift, and then 4. Um, but if you don't want to use two hands to take a screenshot, then just go into your system preferences and then keyboard shortcuts and then screenshots and double click on the current keybind and type in something more reasonable. Right now, I have it set to command shift S. And of course, so this combined with the Mackie tool, you can take several screenshots and then paste them all at once. This has saved me from having a bunch of random screenshots littered across my desktop, since now for everything that I don't actually need saved, I just 
just keep them in my clipboard history. Okay, so in my last video on macOS, I talked about an app called Rectangle, which I still think is a great Windows manager app. However, lately I've started to use a different app called Better Snap Tool because it allows you to define arbitrary areas on your screen to snap a window to. And you can define such a snap zone by placing a window to the size and location that you want, and then click the create a new snap area under the snap areas in the Better Snap Tool menu. And then just click on the window and define a corresponding zone. And now whenever you drag a window into that zone, it will snap to the area that you defined. So instead of just snapping to halves or thirds or quarters, I can have a random sized small little zone down here at the bottom for something like Spotify. And then a bigger and taller zone on the top where I can keep my emails or messages. And then a much larger main window on the right where I do all of my work. I think especially if you use a big monitor, then defining the snap areas can be very helpful. Okay, so I love how little fan noise there is on this new MacBook and how it almost never spins its fans. But when the fans aren't spinning, the palm rest can sometimes get a bit warmer than I would like it to be. So if you have the same issue as me, then you can use an app called iStats Menu to address this. You can manually start the fan with these sliders, but you can also set a fan rule such that the fans would start spinning when the palm rest goes over something like 31 degrees. And you can set another rule to start spinning the fans when the CPU or the GPU gets too hot. However, this method does have some issues because it only has one threshold to spinning up or down the fan. So it can cause the fan to spin up and then immediately slow down and then spin up and immediately slow down and just repeat this cycle. So when you're doing heavier tasks, then I would recommend just putting the fans back to their system controlled setting. All right, and next, so I found this app called Moss, which can change the direction of just your mouse scroll wheel. So you might like this if you're coming from Windows, but my favorite thing that this app can do is the dash key, which can be set to any key. And when you hold that key down, then it will increase the scroll rate by a lot. It's kind of like having the MX Masters free scroll wheel, but on any mouse. If you scroll through a lot of really long documents or really long code bases, then I definitely recommend checking out this app. Okay, and the last tip that I have is a built-in macOS feature. So if you right-click on an image and go down to the quick actions, then you can see that you have a few options for converting this image. So you can either convert it to a PDF, a JPEG, a PNG, or an HEIF. I've been using this to convert my iPhone images, which are of file type HEIC into something smaller like JPEG or PNG in order to upload it online. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you have any other tips, then be sure to leave them in a comment down below. And this may be my last video of 2021. It has been such a crazy year for me and for this channel. So just thank you so much for watching my videos. I'm very excited for 2022. I do have some pretty exciting things planned. So yeah, I hope to see you guys in the new year. All right, so bye for now.